when you got the jail in Tenerife, how long were you in for? Four days. <laughs> how was that? I tell you what, mate. I I hope I never go to jail. <laughs> they don't fuck about over I, there. I, I I listen. I'm I'm one of these people. I actually. Uh, I've, I've got a really good friend who, who, who's in jail now and he rings me every weekend. He just rings me to just, as you say, shoot the shit. He just talks about mm-hmm. life. And I always say to him, I say, listen, mate, I want to be honest <laughs> with you. Because he goes to me, he goes, like, you're mentally strong. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not mentally strong for them jails because mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm never going to jail. He's like, <laughs> like we, the guy's got us. Like, so the police turned up, like, in the street. The taxi was, like, all the way up the street. And the first thing they said, that until... And I was like, yeah, yeah, but I was like, I haven't done nothing. Ten of them get on the ground now. And I was like, what? I haven't done anything. Cuff me. S- sent me and me four mates to the cells, mate, the roughest. I-, I had to have a shit in the corner of one of the cells because <laughs> they wouldn't let me go to the toilet. <laughs> so the, my mate who was in the cell with me was like, Darren, get rid of that shit. It uh-huh. fucking stinks. It's got flies. Mm-hmm. I was like, there's nowhere else to put it. They wouldn't let me go for the shit. Mm-hmm. But what's hilarious about that story is when they put us in the cells, the first night, one of the guards, he was like, one of the, must have been a lieutenant or whatever, c- come to see me. He was like, Darren, I'm a big fan. He was like, do you need anything? And I was like, a little bit of food. It'd be nice to go on my phone. He was like, I'll sort it, no worries. So he comes back like, ha- he went, is that your good mate as well? And my mate's looking at me, he said, say, say, yeah, Darren, I'm fucking hungry as well. Comes back, big fucking uh, breast of chicken, rice, avocado, salad, and a smoothie. And he went, go, on, go and sit in, in, in the holding area. I'll give you your phones. And I was like, fuck, this is some guy this. So we were eating. I was on the phone. And at that point, no one knew about it. But my girlfriend had texted me. She's like, where are you? I haven't heard from you. And I was like, listen, I'm in jail. <laughs> I've been nicked. I'll be out in a few days. And then I couldn't see a reply because I had to get off my phone. We were just in there for four days, mate. It was the grimmest thing ever. We were eating like these stale crackers every day. It was grim. Like, that chicken breast was the best thing about it. Every day was fucking horrible. And then we got out, and the judge just didn't fuck about. He was just like, you cheeky bastards. You come in here, you think you can fucking do this, do that. He was like, give me your passports, 15,000 euros to uh, to leave the fucking island. My friends didn't have any money. So I just have to, I had to pay the 15,000 euros. We tried to go round to sleep in hotels when we got out until we, the, the, the money had uh, cleared, the international money. Every hotel had been sent a fax from the police station, don't let these guys stay here. So we were going and they were like, can't. We ended up having to stay in this little apartment. And then at that point, the Daily the Daily Mail, the Daily Star, the Mirror, the Echo, it just came out. And I was just getting phone calls and I was just like, airplane mode, <laughs> bump, <laughs> bump, <laughs> fuck that shit. Did somebody steal a taxi? Sorry? Did someone steal a taxi? Yeah, well... I, was, I read this story and I was laughing because I'm thinking, man, if I was me, I'd been the fucking taxi left him, man. <laughs> I, I'll tell you the God's honest truth about this story. I won't hold nothing back. I actually wasn't meant to go on this trip. They were going for one of our mates' birthdays the, to Tenerife and they told me about it. And I went and said to Col, I said, Col, I- I'm all right to miss a few days of training and I'm going to go to Tenerife. Col's one of them, he's very uh, silent in what he says but he's got a tone to him. And he went, listen, I don't think it's a good idea, son, because you're a bit, you're not all there, but okay. Because I, I, as I said, you know, I'm 100%. I won't just go out and drink five pints. I'll go out and drink 100 pints and steal taxis. That's what I do. That's my thing. <laughs> but I said, okay, call Sand. I said, I'll be good. So we got there the first night. They, they, these guys have booked themselves a five-star hotel. I just jumped on the holiday. So got there, five-star hotel, got in the room, fucking lovely, lavish. Right, let's get out there. So we went out to like the strip in Tenerife, everyone knew me. Yes, that and buying me shots, so that was it. Just fucking going insane. Ended up in this proper exclusive bar. We we were just going mental. Uh, ended up in McDonald's, blah, blah, blah. Got a taxi back to the, the hotel. Now, I've done this a few, th- few times bef- before this incident, so I must have a thing for it. As my mates are walking through the hallway, I've grabbed the fire extinguisher and just went... <laughs> Just sprayed them. Next minute, one of them have grabbed the fire extinguisher. <laughs> we went in the room. And do you know what? I'm actually quite embarrassed talking about this. Story. It's funny, but it's actually, I shouldn't have done it. We've destroyed the room. We're throwing, we're throwing mattresses off the balcony. Then some guy, I think my friend has actually got a video, some guy at the bottom come, started shouting. <laughs> I've got a tech chair through it off the balcony. 
and and he's like uh, he's just like what oh, come back in we're just going mental we've grabbed our suitcases before the hotel staff could come we've went out the fire exit we've gone up this hill we've went to another hotel we've rang a taxi to the hotel as this taxi's come I've sat in the back of the taxi we're all loading our suitcases into the uh, into the back one of my friends has jumped in what he thought was the passenger side but it was the driver's side over there to the side and I went what are you doing he went fuck I thought it was the passy side he went ah fuck it anyway <laughs> <laughs> and I went no lad and I'm in the back going stop it I'm going drive it back now we'll be okay mm-hmm. and he's like nah fuck that <laughs> he went on a whole trip around the island he was doing donuts and skids mm-hmm. and I'm in the back going crying I'm going stop the taxi please lad we're gonna get fucked he skidded the taxi bombed it out so I've run the other way. I've thought I need to get away from him. Fuck that. And I've sat by this car and I've thought I'm just going to sit here. I'm not going to act like I'm running away or anything. I've sat here. Then he's come running back and I've went, no, get away from me. Lad. Go go somewhere else. He's all attention next minute. These busies have just all pulled up and just grabbed us. They just knew straight away and they were just like, fuck Have the that. guns out now? They had the guns out. They all knew who I was. They must have been, like, they were big fans and that. But any excuse to arrest me, they were going to arrest me and, and, and that was it. And then, Eve, I didn't really come out to anyone so I didn't steal a taxi or anything it was just basically that until steals taxi and mm-hmm. you have to go with that headline I can't yeah. come out and say I didn't steal a taxi even yeah, though I didn't that's just sticking your friend on as well isn't it <laughs> that's it yeah. it was it I've cast him say, say no names <laughs> <laughs> but he fucking he, listen I took the rap yeah. for him I, I got a few fucking beatings off Colin mm-hmm. got shouted at but that was it